The moment has arrived. The Shenzhou 21 mission is en route to the Tiangong station, marking a bold leap in China's orbital research. This flight features a three-person crew, led by seasoned Commander Zhang Lu, joined by two first-time flyers and four live mice, all bound for a six-month stay. Why does this matter? Because it signals a shift from construction to sustained science in orbit. In this video, we'll unpack the mission and its crew, explore the groundbreaking experiments aboard, and zoom out to see what this all means for the future of human spaceflight. The Shenzhou 21 mission lifts off from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center at 2344 Beijing time on October 31, 2025, aboard a Long March 2F-G rocket, with the aim of docking with the Tiangong Space Station in roughly 3.5 hours, a docking time that sets a new national record. This mission is designated as the 16th crewed flight in China's Shenzhou program and the 10th human flight to the Tiangong Orbital Outpost which was completed in its three-module configuration in October 2022. The crew is composed of three astronauts. Commander Zhang Lu, 48, who previously flew on Shenzhou, 15, Flight Engineer Wu Fei, 32, who becomes China's youngest astronaut to date, and Payload Specialist Zhang Hongzhong, 39, joining his first spaceflight. Both Wu Fei and Zhang Hongzhong hail from China's third batch of astronaut candidates selected in 2020. Their roles reflect a deliberate mix of experience and youth, signaling China's intention to sustain long-duration operations in space. On board their journey is an ambitious agenda. The crew will remain aboard Tiangong for about six months, take over from the outgoing Shenzhou, 20 team, manage station systems, conduct extravehicular activities, EVAs, install debris shielding hardware, transfer cargo between modules, and integrate new external payloads. The quick docking is especially significant because it compresses what used to take days into hours, meaning station operations can begin almost immediately. The significance of this mission lies in the shift from build and test to use and operate for Tiangong. Instead of missions being one-off proofs, this mission marks China's entering a continuous occupancy and science production phase. The crew's generational span, 70s, 80s, 90s-born candidates, reinforces a high-tempo astronaut rotation pipeline. Sustained operations also reduce the idle time of the station and enable more frequent experiments and resupply. As this mission takes off, it signals a broader ambition, building institutional capability, creating regular crew handovers, reducing launch to docking time, and using the station as a working lab, not just a symbol. With the stage set by the crew and mission profile, the next part explores the science payloads and why they matter. What sets Shenzhou 21 apart isn't simply the crew or the docking record. It's the science on board that turns Tiangong into a genuine research facility. Among the 27 new experiments planned, one stands out for the first time by China, live rodents. For mice, two male, two female, will be carried into orbit to live in microgravity and study behavior, organ adaptation, and biological responses in a confinement environment. These mice will later return to Earth for detailed analysis. Mice are chosen because their physiology is more analogous to humans than simpler organisms. They reproduce fast, adapt quickly, and serve as excellent models to study space biology. The orbital habitat provides microgravity, limited space, directional airflow to manage waste, lighting synced to Earth's 12-hour cycle and specially formulated food pellets designed to minimize crumbs and weightlessness. All of this enables controlled observation of how microgravity plus confinement affects behavior patterns, organ systems, and tissue adaptation. Beyond biology, the mission carries experiments on molecular chirality, the hand-deadness of amino acids and nucleotides, which investigates whether space conditions influence the selectivity that underpins life's building blocks. On Earth, life uses only left-handed amino acids, exploring how microgravity or radiation might influence that left-versus-right bias has profound implications for astrobiology and the origin of life. Material science is also anchored in this mission. In-orbit tests of lithium-ion batteries using electrochemical and optical studies aim to produce data for future off-Earth power systems. Microgravity fluid physics, combustion experiments, aerospace medicine trials, and space life science make up the remainder of the science portfolio. 
This suite of experiments reveals a key transition. The station is no longer just a human feat. It is now an operational laboratory. The results will shape future spacecraft design, long-duration human missions, and perhaps even medical or materials applications on Earth. It shows that living in space is not about heroic short stays, but about ecosystems, biology, systems, and sustained operations. What this all means for the legacy of China's human spaceflight program, its future trajectory, and the broader spacefaring era we're entering. Shenzhou, 21 sits atop the success of the previous mission, Shenzhou, 20, whose crew remained in orbit for 188 days, and whose commander, Chen Dong, logged over 400 cumulative days in space and completed six spacewalks, a record for Chinese astronauts. These long-duration missions test not just human endurance but systems, maintenance routines, consumables, station architecture, and resupply logistics. With Xinzhou, 21 docking in about 3.5 hours, China has demonstrated refined operations, shorter crew transit time, and a streamlined mission profile. This means fewer resources spent on transit and an earlier start of station operations. It reflects the station's maturity and the program's confidence in repeating crew rotations reliably. Strategically, the mission is a stepping stone toward China's publicly stated moon landing goal by 2030. Mastering six-month stays, live animal biology in orbit, materials science, and rapid logistics are all required components for lunar missions. In effect, Tiangong becomes the training ground for deep space ambitions. On a global stage, as the International Space Station nears the end of its operational life, China's Tiangong could become a major continuous human-occupied research platform, open to more international collaboration, resupply, and perhaps commercial use. China has already indicated its willingness to welcome foreign astronauts and international partners. For our audience, the takeaway is clear. We are witnessing a shift in human spaceflight, from infrequent visits to continuous in habitation and science. Missions are no longer heroic sprints, but long-term stays. The desk in orbit is becoming as real as the lab on Earth. And the science achieved here will ripple into medicine, materials, neuroscience, energy, and maybe one day, lunar and Martian settlements. With that context in mind, we'll wrap things up and reflect on why you should care and why this matters. This flight isn't just a launch. It marks China's transition into routine, scientifically productive human spaceflight, with younger crews, live mammal biology, rapid docking, and a station ready for full-scale operations. Thank you for joining this deep dive into the Shenzhou 21 mission. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and comment. See you next time.